All right, so today we're going to be using place value to add. And I'm gonna need you guys to stick with me and you can follow along. If you can see right here on our Google Classroom here, you can see right there, you can see that's we're gonna be using that specific um, presentation. And over here you can see we've got some websites that we're actually gonna be going to. So you don't need them right this second, but that is um, what we're gonna use, all right? So first of all, let's go ahead and, if you want, open up where it says using place value to add that document. And you can go to this first page here, okay? So I want you to read it with me, and I'm just going, we're going to read it, don't read it out loud, I'll read it to you, but I want you to follow along with your own computer, or you, or you can look up here on the screen, either way it's fine, okay? So, here we go. It says, Faith kept track of the calories she consumed for three weeks. The first week, she consumed 12,490 calories, the second week, 14,295 calories, and the third week, 11,116 calories. About how much did faith consume altogether? All right, so let's stop. When we get to something like this, we should always highlight, underline stuff that's important, right, to this um, word problem. What do you see on here that's what we should highlight, we should really think about? Julia. The numbers. The numbers. All right, so if I went through and I highlighted each of the numbers, which I'm doing right now, you can kind of see that, I would recommend you maybe write those down on your table or your whiteboard so you can kind of stay with us. Now, the numbers are important, however, we need to add meaning to them. So that's a good start. What else do we need to do, Janae? Oh, we can highlight how much did faith consume altogether. Okay, so I'm gonna say you, the question, right? Uh -huh. All right, so I'm gonna underline about how much did faith consume altogether. What does the word consumed mean? And if you see, it's actually in here several times. What does consume mean, Jared? Eight. Eight, right? Gobbled it up. Julia, what were you going to say? I was going to say how much you have or like how much, like what Jared said. Right. So how much he ate. Nice job. All right. So we have a lot of information in here that's going to, might help us. Um, what do we, what should we do next? What do we do next? Yes, Faith. <laughs> Okay, do you guys agree with that? Yes. All right, let's double check. It says the first week she consumed, we have 12,490, second week, 14,295, third week, 11,116 calories. But there's something on here I want you to check out. What is the question asking us? Look at the question again. There's something on it. Marjorie. Um, how about how much did faith... Communes all together. Okay. So we, we know, like they said, we're probably going to add it, but there's a key word in here you've got to catch right away. What word is it? I think it's all together. No, that's part of it. Yes, that's an that's important thing. Valeria? Mm -hmm. Consume, we talked about that. Yes, but there's another word on here that I want you to really catch. Okay, Sophia? No. Janae? Calories? Nope. Adrian? Um, nope. Marjorie? Keep track? Nope. Brian? Nope. About? Yes, Rain. About. I want you to circle that word. Well, not, or maybe just write it above. You know, you can't circle it on your thing. But maybe on your table or your whiteboard, write about. What is that telling us? 
That is a key, key word. Rain, what is it telling us? It's telling us that, um, like, um, how much did she keep track of her calories or something? Close. Something else, Faith? It means, like, it's an estimate. Yes. What did she just say? Estimate. Hello? Estimate. Right. And what does estimate mean? What does that mean? What do you think? Rianne, what do you think estimate means? Kind of a guess. That's part of it. Valeria? Um, how much? Yeah, you're getting there. Daniel? Um, All right, so you just used the word right there that I, like, say it again, right at the very end there. Round. Round, right? So we're not going to be an exact answer yet, maybe, but we want to kind of get close to it. All right, so let's go on to the next part here. And look what we have here. Right? We have a, what is called a tape bar, right? It's a tape bar. And... Why do I have it set up this way? What does this mean? What did we do? Where did this come from? Emily, where did this information, what do you think all this stuff means? Okay, right. But where, where, did, this, where did this information come from? from the passage, right? From the actual uh, word problem itself. So, do you see this tape bar? Look at look up here, please. Notice, they just drew a rectangle, right? Notice it's split into how many parts? Three. Why three parts? Why is it three parts? Ethan, why do you think it's, in, it's separated into three parts? Okay, so they each have their own place, their own number. Because there's three numbers, right? That makes sense. What does this A up here mean? What does that A mean? Answer. Okay. Daniel. The answer. The answer. Or, right, so I'm going to write that in here. Or it could also mean all together, right? So I'm going to put all together. When... I, I'm going to highly recommend you're going to see these tape bars being used over and over. Some of you just wrote the numbers on the table, which is fine, but I'd love to see you go ahead and make a tape bar that has each thing in it because this is going to be a good practice. This is going to be something that's going to really help you see a problem, especially the harder ones that you're going to get to as we go through the school year here. So go ahead right now, draw the tape bar. Tape bar. Draw the tape bar. All right. Give you a second here. I see some good drawing. Nice job. Now, by the way, does, this, does the rectangle, does the tape bar have to be perfect? No, not at all. This isn't about getting the ruler out and making it perfect, perfect. This is just to help you organize and see what you're doing. It's a great way to organize it. Kind of like a math graphic organizer, right? All right. So take a look up here. We're going to add this together, but because the word about was there, do I need to know the exact amount? Hello? Yeah. Adrian? No. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have to. Well, if it says about, like, look, let me go back. Take a look. If we went back to... Look, look back up here. Look. 
if I go back to the actual question, it says about. And notice what I did there, Andres. Notice what I did. I went back to check the question. Always go back. Make sure you have everything correct, right? And we're looking at about. Since it's about, we don't need the exact answer. We're going to estimate, just like you guys said. All right, let's go back to where we were. So take a look up here. I want you to look at it. It says, which of these estimates will produce a more accurate answer? So you can look on my screen or look at yours. And take a look at this. Right? It says, which of these estimates will produce a more accurate answer? What does that mean, more accurate? What does that mean, Janae? Like, accurate means, like, a more, like, you're closer to, like, two more correct to it. Yes. Did you hear what she said, Brian? Did, what did she just say? That was good. You want her to say it again? Okay, say it again. Accurate means like you're a little bit more closer and a little bit more correct to like the answer. I like it. Did, did you hear what she said? Try it again. Accurate is like you're more closer. To right. The Do we have to be the exact answer that what it is? No. 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 We're getting close to it, right? We're getting close. Absolutely. So take a look up here. You have couple to look at. You've got this one right here, and you have this one right here. Go ahead, look at both of those, and turn to your partner and dis discuss which of these would be the more accurate answer in this case. Go ahead, turn to your neighbor. Right, but are we trying to find the exact answer? No. So go to the screen that talks about you have two choices to look at. Go to that screen right now. Move up to that one. Nope. Go, go to the one that's on, on the TV right now. There. Choose from one of those two. Go back. Go back to screen. Adrian's at the right one. Right? Which one of those is going to be the more accurate answer? All right, here we go. Class, class. Yes, yes. Look up here, please. Okay, so tell me, and you can say this is what you thought, or after listening to your partner, you say, hey, my partner said this, and I agree with them. So you can tell me. 
Which one of those? You have two to choose from. Let's look at it real quickly. You have one that is 10,000, and it, so you have 10,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000 is around 30,000, right? And then you have this one here, which is 12,000 plus 14,000 plus 11,000 equals 37,000. Which of these is the most more accurate one and why? And why? That's the key here, okay? All right, Jasmine, so what did your table say? Since we assess the 12, which is in the box, and the 14, which is in the box, too, and 11 is in the box. We, we say it is because it's the same number from the same box. Okay. So they think it's the second one here. We're going to be estimating by the thousands, not the ten thousands. All right. Can anybody agree with it and explain more? Adrian. My partner thought it was, uh, he thinks it's 30,000 because um, it's closer to these numbers, like uh, 12,000, 11,000, and 14,000. 14, 14, so you think that we're, we estimate by the 10,000s is going to give you a better answer than going by the thousands. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Somebody else. Okay, Miss Julia. I think it would be the, the thousands would be more accurate because it the ten thousand it just has tens and the thousands it has more of the num of the actual numbers. Okay, all right. Well, let's take a look at this. Janae, you have one more thing to say. Uh huh. I think it might be closer to the thirty-seven thousand because of. Um, the numbers don't have enough to get to 10,000 yet, maybe. Okay. They, don't, they might not have enough to get to 10,000. All right, well, let's see. So let me back this up real quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and agree with those who went with the thousands, right? This one right here because it does get a little bit closer to what is really true. We're not worried about, in this case, the hundreds. Look up here, please. We're not worried about the hundreds or the tens or the ones places. And look at this, 30,000 versus 37,000. If we were to actually add all three of these, it would be closer to the 37,000 one. And it's not that we couldn't round by the 10,000s, it's just that we get a better, more accurate answer with the thousands place. Does anybody not understand that? I can show you again. Okay, all right, good. Thank you for the thumbs up, I appreciate that. All right, so moving on, look at this one. How could this problem be represented in a tape diagram? I want you to go ahead and draw it on there, and I'm going to have at least one of you draw it on here. Okay? So somebody show me on your table, how could this be represented in a tape diagram? Go. Show, just do it. Just on your, on your table. Looking good. We're doing a tape diagram. Not, we're not adding it up yet. We're not adding it up yet. We're just going to do it with a tape diagram. Okay. So while you guys are doing this, Brian over here, Brian A, he's, he's done it. Let's see if he did it right. So, Brian, I'm going to put this down here with your finger. Use that as an example. And you can see what he did. You guys pay attention.
All right, so explain to us why you did it that way, Brian. Um, it's because, um, because the first one that it's showing is 3,134, so I put it in the first box, and then the second box is 2,493. Okay. Does anybody, can anybody agree, disagree? All right. E Emily, okay, so why are we setting it up this way? You agreed with them, so wh why do you think this is right? Yeah, absolutely. It keeps it organized. I'm, I'm looking around, and Brian did this on his table, but didn't do it on here. I do like what he did, and I just looked at Emily's. I like it. They both went up here and added A, right? So, nice job. I appreciate that, because what does that A represent? Yeah, I hear different answers, but right, I, I also heard all together. And that's a key thing. Okay, so let's move on. Did, it, did this one look like the one he created? No. He changed it. I mean, it's changed up here. Is that wrong? No. Somebody tell me. Why this one's okay? Marjorie, why is this okay? Or maybe you don't think it's okay. Well, it's okay because um, they just switched the number in different boxes. And can we do that? Yes. yes. Right. Adrian. I don't, I don't think it's okay. Why? Because the C, is, it, it, they have a C in the name, but the numbers are right because it's around, but they have a C in the name. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that part. Um, the C... It's just, you know, the, the complete answer. Um, but think about it. When we're adding, can we move the numbers around? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay? So that one, we're okay. All right. So here's what I want you to do. You're going to have to go to that website that was on, um, let's see, maybe get out of here. Go to the website that was on the uh, Google Math. Which one? Go to one of these here. Whichever one? I would go, let's go to the first one that says, I'll circle it for you here. This one right here. Right. So on the slideshow, you could go to that link as well. Let's see. Oh, interactive place value disk. So right here, you can either go back to there or use this one right here and go to the interactive place value disk. And I want you to build, using those disks, that number that we just did, the adding problem. Okay? So go back. These are the numbers you're going to use. What does it look like? How would you build that and add it together? Okay? Set, go. All right, so now you had a chance to build that number, or those two numbers, actually. And so I'm just going to randomly pick a couple. I can see, let's, see, let's look at Jared's. So as Jared's is loading up, Jared, why don't you explain how you built these as soon as it loads up here. All right, explain what you did. Well, I got two thousands, and I got four of the hundreds because the number was 2,493. So I got the 90 thousands, and I pressed the organize button and I split the thing in half so it won't look messy. And then for the thirty three thousand I got three thousand and one hundred and I got three tens 
to make the 30, and I got four ones to make the four. All right, so do you guys agree with what he built, how he built it? Uh, yes. Does anybody disagree? You disagree or you agree? Okay, I see the sign. Thank you. Thank you for showing me the sign. All right, good. So, Jared, thank you. Um, I appreciate how he did it so we can see really, and I like he said, hey, I split it so you can kind of see. That's awesome. Now, and hopefully you did something similar to this. So now we can actually add it from here, right? We could add it from here. So I'm going to go back to the one I have, and I want to show you something. And bring it up here. So take a look at this. Did I build it similar to Jared's? Let me put it lined down the middle here. Do you see it's, it's separated? We have how many thousands over here? Three. How many hundreds? One. How many tens? Three. How many ones? Four. Is that the number that we started with? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. All right, look down at the bottom. Let me change colors here so we have an idea. So how many thousands down here? Two. How many hundreds? Four. How many tens? Nine. And how many ones? Three. Is that the number that we create that we started with? Yes. yes. Good. So if that's where we're at, now using these discs, I want to show you something. Okay? Ready? I want to add this up and look what we're doing here. So let me change the color so we can see. If we add the ones. We get four and seven, or four and three, and it equals what? It equals seven. Seven. That makes sense, yes? Yes. But look at the tens. We have three tens, and then we have nine tens. What does that give us? Two. No. We have three tens, nine tens. How many tens do we have? Come on, everybody look. How many tens do we have? If I have three at the top, nine down below, Aaron, how many tens do we have? All together there. How many tens is that? Three and nine. Twelve. Twelve. We have a problem, though. Look up here at the screen. We have 12 tens in the tens place. Can we have a double digit in there? No. no. Andres, what do you think? Can I leave my 12 right there? No, why not? Not sure? Faith, help us out here. Ah, say that again real loud. No, because if you if it's a double digit, then you have to group it. Then you have to group the the tens play um, the second digit to the. So look, we we can't leave it that twelve. It just doesn't fit there. But watch what I'm gonna do. I can take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten this group right here, and we're actually going to move it over to here. If I take 10 from the tens place, what does that give me? It gives me 100, right? So I could actually add another, look what I did up there, I can add another 100. Let me change it to the same color as up there so we can stay together here. We like orange. So I can add another hundred to that place. And now look at the bottom. I can get, that's where the, the one goes away. Look up here. And we're left with that two. So it doesn't really mean two. What does that two really mean? Faith, 20. Colin, what did Faith just say? 20. 20. And if you remember right, we actually had a 10 over there. So 
It was more than that. It was a hundred. We moved it over. So now how many, te- how many hundreds do I have? With the new one I just added. How many hundreds do I have? Ryan? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's because we added one. Oh, see down here, I, I missed this arrow down here. This arrow right here. So let's get, let me get rid of that one. Pretend like you can't see that one because so, it was already added on there. But if you add just the one I had and the ones we built, what do we have? Can you see it? So just count. Count again. That one, and, 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 and count this one too. Six. six. That's where we get that six. Okay? A little messy. I apologize. I know it's kind of hard to see, but uh, they had, the, it was already on there. I just forgot to show that one to you. All right. So now we have six hundreds. What does that six really mean? It's not just a six. It means what, Janae? It means 600. 600. Good. And now we have our thousands, right? Alyssa. So how many thousands do we have up there? Okay, we'll count. We have this many and this many. How many thousands do we have? We have five. That's where we got that number. So our total answer, take a look, please. I know it's a little messy, but our total answer is this, how do we say this number? 5,627. Wow, I don't hear everybody. Let's hear it. 5,627. Nice job. Okay, moving on. Isn't this the one we just did? Okay. How could this be represented in writing? I want, I'm going to give you time to work on that. And I want you to go to this one, too. How could this problem be represented in a tape diagram? And then look. You could build it again. You can build it with here with our place value chart. And then how could this be represented in writing? So I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want you to go through the rest of this and and build this next number. Build the number that we just came up with. And take a look. There's also one more word problem. How could that one be represented in a tape diagram? And that's where we're going to spend the rest of the time just finishing up these problems and especially this word problem. Any questions before you get started on your own? Okay. All right. Good job.